<clears throat> Hello, my name is Owen Burns, and I worked with Dr. Sakara this summer at RISC. My project was to create a neurosymbolic architecture, which combined the benefits of an LLM with a formal planner, such as optic. So the motivation for this is that in a lot of situations, human planners struggle in complex environments and require the assistance of planning tools to help if there's multiple objectives it's occurring simultaneously and lots of moving parts. A common situation that is involved with this are naval operations, military operations, anything that involves the movement of large numbers of people and equipment, especially in time-constrained scenarios. How, while there are planning tools such as formal planners that can use symbolic um, specifications of a problem and domain, these problem and domain specifications are often way too involved to be useful in real world and especially dynamic environments where a specific concern that may not have been an issue at a certain time step suddenly becomes a factor later on, and then that would require redoing the domain creation. Um, some work recently has involved using LLMs either as translators to create PDDL, which can then be solved by one of these symbolic planners, or using LLMs themselves to create a plan. And while there is some uh, promising results from translation, the LLMs themselves have proven unable to generate plans which can be confirmed to be correct. So the approach that we came up with is a neurosymbolic architecture which uses a genetic algorithm to optimize constraints. And what makes this unique is that instead of having the LLM generate an entire PDDL problem, which can then be solved by a planner, which involves regenerating the goal constraints each time, Generating constraints to inject into the problem file allows us to keep the goal the same while changing the way that the state trajectory is, ex is executed, which is useful for dynamic planning environments where the goal may be the same throughout, but different situations cause users to have different preferences about the way in which the plan is carried out. <clears throat> and this system is integrated into the broader ONR CHI cooperative planning agent and some of the constraints that went along with that is that the interface developed for it um, must be able to be interacted with via natural language, and the planner must be able to generalize to new domains without additional training as the domain may change partway through the system being used. The overall architecture is on the screen here. At the start, we take the user's preferences, which are at a high level and not symbolically grounded, and then symbolically ground them. So for example, if someone says, I need you to remove all the underwater debris, one of the goals may be remove underwater debris zero from waypoint A before the end of the plan. And that using the same names as are in the PDDL specification gives the reward model more to work with and the LLM as well when it generates these initial set of individuals. Um, so the genetic algorithm starts from a set of constraints that's generated by the LLM and then duplicates and mutates those into a broad initial population that covers a good diversity of the available constraints. And then we use an LSTM-based reward model to take in the plans resulting from passing those constraints through a symbolic planner along with each of the symbolically grounded goals to determine how many of those goals that plan actually adheres to. The plans that adhere to the most goals are kept and the remaining individuals discarded. Those individuals are uh, mutated, which can mean swapping one of the arguments of a predicate or <clears throat> negating it or changing it from, for example, this must always be true to this must sometimes be true. And repeating that process until the reward model determines that one of those individuals has satisfied all of the goals. The results then passed back to the user as a series of the PDDL steps summarized and translated in natural language, along with an overall summary of success or failure of planning. The domain in keeping with the ONR Chi theme is a waterway recovery domain where there's two waterways. Uh, I have a map here that is an accurate facsimile of the domain. 
There's a waterway on the top and a waterway on the bottom. Both are blocked by debris. And the goal is to get the rescue ship at the start to the salvage to the ship that is wrecked and needs to be salvaged at the end and salvage it in the most efficient amount of time. This offers a couple avenues for users to provide feedback, such as saying don't visit one of the waypoints or do visit one of the waypoints, whether or not you should remove the debris on one side or the other and the order in which assets can move. The results that we collected compared using our GA with stopping at the LLM generated constraints and just using those to plan. And we found that in 88% of cases where the LLM had answered incorrectly and the, the plan resulting from its constraints was either non-existent or wrong, the plan arrived at by the GA ended up being correct. And in 75% of overall cases, the GA was correct compared to only 53% for just using an LLM. However, we found that in 36% of cases where the LLM had answered correctly, the final answer offered by the GA was incorrect. And we suspect that this is because those cases are ones in which the correct constraint set required multiple constraints to get correct. And so the GA had resulted in a plan that satisfied a number of those constraints, but not all of them, and the LSTM misclassified the partially correct answer. <clears throat> so overall, we concluded that the GA-based approach uh, was successful in improving performance over an LLM-only neurosymbolic architecture and was successful at adapting plans to user feedback. Thank you. I had a great time this summer, and it was a very valuable opportunity to be here. Thank you to the sponsors and thank you to the people organizing RIS and thank you to my mentors, Dana and Katya.